So I, I have testified previously that I don't think there is any country that presents a more severe threat to our innovation, our uh, economic security, and our democratic ideas. And the uh, tools in their toolbox uh, to um, influence our businesses, our academic institutions, our governments at all levels um, are deep and wide uh, and persistent. Um, in addition to some of the things that have been mentioned in the threat assessment, I'll just highlight one which just illustrates the diversity of their tactics. Um, we had an indictment that we announced, I think, last fall uh, that relates to the Chinese Operation Fox Hunt, which is essentially them conducting uncoordinated illegal law enforcement activity here on U.S. soil as a means to threaten, intimidate, harass, uh, blackmail um, members of the same diaspora that Chairman Warner mentioned uh, in his opening comments. Um, and it's an ind indication and an illustration of just how challenging um, and diverse this particular threat is. We have now over 2,000 investigations that tie back to the Chinese government. And on the economic espionage investigation side alone, it's about a 1,300% increase over the last several years. We're opening a new investigation in China every 10 hours, and I can assure the committee that's not because our folks don't have anything to do with their time. Right. Senator Feinstein. Diane. Thank you very much. Um, you note in your statement for the record that China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have the ability right now to conduct cyber attacks on critical infrastructure and cause temporary disruptions. Additionally, in 2019, you provided examples including China's ability to disrupt natural gas pipelines for a day to weeks and Russia's ability to disrupt our electrical distribution networks for hours. So here's the question. Is this problem getting better or worse? Are our adversaries more capable of threatening our critical infrastructure today than they were two years ago? Senator, thank you very much. In terms of our critical infrastructure, our 17 sectors of critical infrastructure, uh, to bluntly uh, answer your question, our adversaries continue to get better at what they're doing. Uh, I would also tell you, though, that uh, we are also uh, working very, very um, holistically across our government to improve two things, our ability to have resilience in that infrastructure and our ability to respond. Uh, and we have made progress there. But there is, as we've seen over the, the past two intrusions, a scope, scale, and sophistication of our adversaries today uh, that makes us uh, take notice, and we as a, as a nation must take notice of what our adversaries are doing. And so cybersecurity for us is national security, and uh, we continue to work at it every single day. Thank you. Is this a single question round? I have a, time for one more? Okay. Um, what would you tell the chief executive officers and chief security officers at our critical infrastructure companies. What actions should they take? What type of investments do they need to make now? Senator, I think the, the first thing is uh, the threat is real. And I don't think I have to say that very often because the chief executive officers and the, the CISOs know that today. Uh, but I think the second piece is, is that uh, there is no one industry uh, and one sector of our government that's going to be able to, to provide us the defense that's necessary for our nation. This is a team sport. And so this has to be done public and private. This has to be done between the intelligence community, obviously DHS, DOD, FBI, and justice. This is really the, the key piece of uh, our, our way forward, which is, is teamwork. And, and I, I would say that We've learned that from our elections as well, and I, I would offer Director Ray your thoughts on it. So I, I think you've put your finger, Senator, on, on the key element of the, of the challenge. The private sector is central to this. 90% of the country's critical infrastructure is in the hands of the private sector. Um, and it's important to think of cybersecurity not as a single event, but as a campaign. These are 
uh, no longer a question of if a, an institution is going to be compromised, but when. And so the more important question, if I were talking, and I often am talking to CEOs and CISOs, is to focus uh, their cybersecurity more than they have in the past inwardly. The key is how fast you detect the compromise and how fast you remediate it. Uh, and, and then secondly, the importance of reaching out and coordinating with government, public-private partnership, is at a premium because we often use in the threat context the expression left of boom. You know, we all want to get left of boom. Well, in the cyber arena, one company's right of boom is left of everybody else in the same industry's boom. And so we need that first company, and someday you're going to be the first company if you're the CEO. Someday you're going to be the second or third or fourth company. Uh, we need, in every instance, those companies to be stepping forward, promptly reaching out to government so that we can prevent the threat from metastasizing across the rest of the industry. Well, let me ask this follow-up. What investments does the IC need to make? What steps do you need to take in order to change this sort of status quo? Well, I think we're working more and more closely than ever across the IC on the issue, and so that level of partnership and integration is going well and continues to improve and is important. But I think the bigger piece is more and more public-private engagement between the IC and, uh, and the private sector. And I know that there has been discussion about different ways to incentivize the private sector to come forward more quickly and promptly and fulsomely, and I think those are, are key to our future on this issue. Thank you. And I would simply add very briefly 